Overtraining is a term many of you have probably already heard about, but what actually is overtraining and how can you tell you are doing it? Basically, overtraining means you are giving your body more stress than it can recuperate from and because it has more stress than it can handle, you are effectively limiting your body's ability to get stronger. So, let's put this into one simple sentence. Now, the first reaction many people have when they stopped making progress is that they think they are not training hard enough, that they have to use more weight, run faster, run longer, do longer workouts, whatever. But when you are overtraining, your body already has more stress than it can handle. And if you now pile even more stress on top of that, you actually are only making everything worse. Now the big question of course is how do you find out if you are overtraining or not? And this is not as simple as it sounds because first of all when you are into fitness you know that you have to push your body to its limits to get better. But there is a difference between pushing the limits and stepping right over them and you have to know which of the two you are doing. And number two, the symptoms we experience when we are overtraining are different for each and every one of us which makes it even more complicated to tell if you are overtraining or not. However, there is a list of symptoms um, that people most likely experience when they are overtraining so let's have a quick look at this list. And the number one item on this list for uh, symptoms of overtraining is a sudden drop in performance. Which means, for example, you used to be able to do X amount of weight for so and so many reps, but for the last couple of weeks you weren't able to do that. Or you know that you used to be able to run 5 miles in so and so many minutes, but for the last couple of weeks you weren't able to do that. If this drop in performance stays with you for longer amounts of time, then that is a very good sign of overtraining. Number two on the list is feeling tired despite getting enough sleep. Like for example you have enough sleep each and every night but during the next day you feel like going right back to bed again. Number three is the exact opposite and that is sleeplessness or you often wake up during the night and then have trouble going back to sleep. Number four is general aches and pains. For example, today your neck hurts and the next day the elbow and then it's the knee and then it's the neck again. If these little aches and pains stay with you for longer amounts of time, then that is another good sign of overtraining. Number five is headaches. Um, we all experience the occasional headache, but if you have more headaches than you should, then that is another symptom. Number six is an increased number of colds. Like with the headaches, we all have the occasional cold, but if you have more colds than you should have, then um, that shows you do, that your body doesn't have enough power to fight off these colds and you experience more colds than you should. Number seven is moodiness. If for the last couple of weeks people told you you are so grumpy lately, that can be a sign of overtraining. Number eight is depression. If your life is going okay, but uh, lately you feel down all the time and you don't know even why you're feeling down, that too can be a sign of overtraining. Number nine is the loss of enthusiasm for your sport. For example, if lately you feel like, oh, I don't want to get out my dumbbells or I don't want to put on my running shoes and go run, like you dread the pure thought of doing your fitness workouts, that too 
can be a sign of overtraining. Number 10 is decreased appetite. If for the last couple of weeks um, you didn't feel like, like eating as much as you used to and you already lost weight because of it, um, despite not actually wanting to lose weight, that too can be a symptom. And last but not least, as number 11, is an increased number of injuries. Just like with the headaches and the colds, we all have the occasional injury. But if you lately have more injuries than you should, that too can be a sign of overtraining. So, to put this all together, if you experience any of these symptoms uh, for longer amounts of time, then that is a sign of you possibly overtraining. If you are not sure if you are overtraining or not, then simply take a break from your training for a week and then see how you feel after this week. If you didn't overtrain one week off, won't kill you, but if you actually are overtraining and you feel better after this week, then you have more certainty about uh, what you should be doing to get out of it. Now, if you found out that you do suffer from overtraining, what should you do about it to get out of it? And the cure for overtraining is actually pretty simple. Number one is rest, number two is rest, and number three is rest. How long you have to rest depends on how severe your case of overtraining is. If it is a rather light case that has been only going on for a short amount of time, then a week off may be enough. If it is a more severe case that has been going on for longer, you might need several weeks of rest to fully recuperate. It is a good idea to use this time of rest to identify what brought you into overtraining. So, first of all, have a good look at your training schedule. Was it too difficult? Was it too much? Have a good look at it and then once you are ready to go back into training, start with very light workouts, only gradually increasing the difficulty level. Next, also have a good look at your nutrition. Do you give your body enough and the right kinds of food to perform to its best possibilities? Third, if you aren't already, uh, start keeping a training log so you can identify when your performance is stalling or even falling. And fourth, don't forget to look at things in your life that aren't related to fitness but can contribute to your body having stress. For example, if you work as a construction worker six days a week, that is stress for your body and you can't perform in the same way as, for example, a runner that has nothing to do but train for its running performance. So look at all these factors and adjust your training schedule, taking these factors into account. The best thing to do, of course, is to not go into overtraining in the first place. If you, for example, are a beginner and you start a training schedule, uh, no matter if it's for cardio or weightlifting, that has been designed for people who have years and years of experience and know their bodies very well, then that is a very good ticket to go into overtraining if you aren't injuring yourself before that. So judge your abilities realistically and keep in mind that it is better to undertrain than to overtrain because undertraining might mean that you stay behind your peak performance and your progress may be a bit slower but contrary to overtraining undertraining won't keep you out of the fitness loop for weeks or even months and this concludes this video. As always, I hope it was of a uh, little help to you. And with that, I let you get back to your scheduled World Cup watching. Bye bye.